Hey everybody, I wanted to do a video today on starting your seeds indoors. Now, uh, I'm not gonna lie, right now it's kind of hard for me. I just said goodbye to my son who's in the military, he's in the US Army, and um, he, I hadn't seen him since June, and he's been in for two weeks, and uh, just said goodbye to him. Not sure the next time I'll see him, so, uh, <laughs> you know, keeping it real with this channel, um, for those of you that have kids that are in the military, you know the emotions that I'm going through. It's it's, it's bittersweet, super proud, and um, super sad at the same time. Um, me having served in the military, I've been in his shoes, but being on this side as a parent is uh, it's a little difficult. So um, I'm gonna get through this though, because I want to do this video for you all. So let's. Uh, <laughs> All right, so let's try this again. Hey everybody, so today we're gonna to do a video on seeds, and not just seeds, but starting your seeds. It's toward the end of January right now, um, and like I've been saying for the last couple, uh, and like I've been saying for about the last month, March 1st for zone nine is the last expected frost date, at least for the Houston area. So you want to get your seeds started indoors if you want to start planting immediately when the when your whenever your all's last frost date is. Super important to do this, and it can get very overwhelming. Uh, my table has so many seeds; it's ridiculous. Like I don't even know where to start, to be completely honest. So I made a list of what I want to grow in the spring. Tomatoes, cucumbers, squash, peppers, uh, eggplant, uh, beets. Never tried beets before. That will be a harvest and taste that will be coming because I've got four or five different varieties of beets. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, so, hey, what do you need in order to start your seeds indoors? Well, if anyone who watched the prepping for the single seed challenge video that I did, uh, it was mainly for the second grade class that I've been adopted by or this channel's been adopted by um, to help them prepare for starting their own single seed challenge. But it's the same concept. So I'll put a link to that video down below and um, if y'all wanna go back and watch that. But starting your seeds indoors is super simple. You need a good soil and you wanna make sure that whatever soil that you get, whatever it is, whatever brand, you want a seed starting mix. I cannot stress how important it is to have a seed starting mix. Now, that's my experience and that's what I do this channel based off of is my experience. And I've tried it with a potting soil and I tried it with seed starting mixes. And if you're gonna start your seeds in seed trays like these or like these, or any kind of seed starting, uh, any kind of seed tray, you want a seed starting mix. I cannot, like seriously, you want a seed starting mix. Then you want your trays. Whatever kind of trays that you're gonna use, make sure you have them. Um, obviously you want your seeds for whatever you're gonna plant. If you're doing a heat mat, if you're starting indoors like I am, I'm in a garage. Now, I hate filming in here, but it's, 41 degrees outside with winds blowing, I can't be outside. So as much as I hate filming inside the garage, hey, it's the end of January. Don't have a choice, gotta film in here. So it's all good. We'll make it work, right? You want a heat, so, you want a heat mat and you want your grow lights. Now I have two sets of grow lights that should cover this mat that I bought. Y'all saw the mat that I I got this year at the beginning of the Single Seed Challenge 2022 video, which I'll link in the description below. But hey, we're gonna show you how to do it. It's not hard at all. The hardest thing, honestly, is keeping from getting overwhelmed, uh, at least for me, just being real. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is get the soil ready. What that now, will do is allow, when you put the seed into the tray or into the hole, and you pack the soil back in around it, that allows the seed to get good contact with the wet soil. 
I would highly advise not putting dry soil into your seed trays and then getting them wet because what I noticed last year when I did that is that when you pour the water on, it's going to move the soil around as the water is going down through each of those little cells and that messes with the seed. So I would completely, I highly recommend moistening your soil first and then putting it in the seed tray, which we're about to do right now. Okay, so when putting your soil into your trays, regardless if it's these kind of trays right here, these, whatever, these are the first time I've ever used these. And I thought these were kind of a cool idea because you'll be able to see the roots growing through it. I think that's cool. So here's what you want to do when you're putting soil into these trays. You want to put the soil in and you want to kind of pack the soil in. You don't want to really leave it loose. The reason for that is whenever your seeds are ready, whenever your plant is ready to be transplanted, if your seed plug is really loose, then when you go to pull it out, you, you're, going to have, you're going to have a very hard time keeping it all together. If you pack in the soil now and you make this nice and tight, then when you go to push, when you go to push the seed plug out, it'll all stay together and that'll let you plant it a lot easier. So let's go ahead and get the soil in here. Also, when you're doing your seed starting mix, you don't want the soil super, super wet. Like, as you can see, it's dripping. I made this a little too wet, honestly, for my take, for what I like. And this is the first time I've ever used Burpee's seed starting mix. I usually use Jiffy's, but I couldn't find it. So I got Burpee's. Now, anyone who has done this for a while knows that Burpee's is one of the big brands that's out there. So I'm excited to see just what it will do. And what I've noticed is the composition of this soil is definitely different than that of Jiffy's. There's a lot of, I'm guessing this is cocoa core. Um, as you can see there on my, my finger, my pinky there. And I don't normally fill these up as high as I'm doing. Um, I think I'm a little distracted, but that's okay. We're just gardening, right? Okay, and there you have it. The soil is packed in there pretty good, and I'm ready to put the seeds in. So let's do that. Okay, one of the things I like to use whenever I'm doing, or I'm starting the seeds, is I like to use a pen. Now it might seem a little weird, but these right here are perfect for starting your holes. Now, I like to do two seeds per tray. Okay, as you can see right there, there are two little holes in each one of those trays. Now, I like to do two seeds per tray because worst case scenario, whichever seed grows the best, you could always thin out the other one. Or if only one seed takes, well then, hey, you've got at least one seed growing per tray. So I always do two. I know some people will do three um, or more, but I do two. I figure, hey, 50-50, good enough. Let's just roll with that, so. Okay, in this seed tray, I'm going to do three peppers. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do these cayenne long. These are really hot and they did good last year. I'm gonna do the seven pot. And according to the back here, this is supposed to be one of the hottest peppers in the world. I don't know, let's try it. I'm not excited to do a harvest and taste on this, but I will. And Black Gumbo Southern Gardening did these seeds last year for his single seed challenge. And just look at how pretty the cover is. I just, I have to try these. They're a mild pepper that's not much hotter than a jalapeno. So hey, why not? Why not give it a shot, right? Just looks so pretty. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Let's do it. Plus I have 12 cells here. I'm gonna go ahead and do a, a row of four to each one of these, to each one of these peppers. So, All 
Okay, and just like that, we're done. That didn't take anything but just a few minutes, not long at all. Now, if you're wondering why I'm moving these to the middle right here, is because when you put this lid on, if you have them back here, it keeps the lid up. Now, I, again, I've never used this before, but I like it because, look, you can switch and determine how much humidity you keep inside your dome here. And that's it, y'all. This is a little water tray, which I'll put water in here. Just a little bit. You don't need a lot because it's already pre-moistened, remember? And then you just fit the... Make sure you push these down in good so you can get the lid on. And there you go. That's it. This thing is ready to go. It's labeled. You got the seeds started in there. One thing I did not put on the tags is today's date. So you know how old the plant is. Also, I recommend journaling. Now when I'm done in, done here, I'm gonna go write everything down in, in my gardening journal. The dates can always come off, but if you have it in your journal, then you're always gonna have it. So this thing is ready to go. I'm just gonna sit it right there on the heat mat. And as you can see, this one I obviously I just put on. These I put on earlier, and look at all the condensation inside. And then if you come over here, now this is my cow manure test and these are the single seed challenge cups for this year. This one is for the students in the second grade class and then this one is mine here at Down Home Backyard Garden. And as of right now, four days in, still no, still no growth in there, but it's okay because if you look, the mat is at a constant 75 degrees. So we're good. There's really not a lot to starting seeds, whether it's in the spring, the fall, the winter, it doesn't matter. There's not a lot to it. I have found that the biggest thing to do when you're going to start seeds is to plan, give yourself time. And did I say plan? Plan. Because when I broke out all the seeds and I separated them all, uh, I was incredibly overwhelmed. Uh, just keeping it real and um, that's the last thing you want to do this should be fun this should be exciting you should get giddy <laughs> and, and happy about doing your seeds and starting your garden or your flower beds or whatever you're going to do or whatever you're going to plant it should not be stressful that, that's what I'm trying to tell everyone don't be stressed about it have fun if you need to take a break then take a break regroup and come back at so i hope this video was very helpful for anyone who's not quite sure what they need it's it's really not difficult like i said seed starting mix your seed trays your seeds and then a heat and a light source whether it's a window seal or a heat mat and grow lights that's all you need and then make sure you keep the soil moist and just be ready to plant whenever the last um the last frost date passes and that's it. So hey, that's all I got for y'all today. If you found this video educational in any way, shape, or form, please share it. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I would appreciate it. Check me out on Facebook and Instagram, Down Home Backyard Gardening. And hey, everyone, as always, shine bright. And you know what? Hold on. I want to say I love you to my son. Uh, <clears throat> I want to say I love you to my son. I'm very proud of you, and I cannot wait until you come back home. So again, on behalf of Down Home Backyard Gardening, as always, shine bright and harvest hard.